Leave off the heading, and I just want you to recall yesterday, I introduced to you, or I put names on, two laws of arithmetic. Can someone give me one of them, Charlie? Commutative and associative. Cool, you can give me both, that's all right. The commutative law and the associative law. Bit of a mouthful. Okay. Now, in simple, simple terms, what did they mean? What does it mean if something, if an operation is commutative? Yeah, thank you. Five minus three, it's it's the same as saying. Oh no, sorry. No. You want like plus maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's okay. Five plus three is the same as saying. Three plus five. Okay, good. So if you're adding two numbers together, right? Five and three, it's the same as three and five. Okay. So multiplication addi addition rather is commutative. You can change the order, and multiplication is as well. So commutative means order can go in different ways. What does associative mean? It had to do with brackets, if you recall. Yeah, Renish, what do you suggest? Uh, it's like when you get a problem with brackets, then um, you can put the brackets on the two problems and then it'll give the same answer. Again. Okay, yeah, so what we're looking at is when you don't have a pair of numbers, if you've got like a bunch of numbers like this, okay, I can group them, I can add brackets in wherever I like. I can do these two first, if I want, five plus 11. Or alternatively, I can do these two first, uh, 1 plus 15, and I'll still get the same thing. Yeah, two and so like algebra. Okay, so we're gonna we get that today, okay? But for those of us who for most of us who do not know what that means, simply like this is how numbers work, right? You're adding and multiplying, you can change order, or you can group them however you please. Okay? Now again, still staying in the adding and multiplying world, I want to introduce to you a third. Law, and it's a really cool, useful, powerful one. Uh, again, it's got a bit of a fancy name. So this is the heading, which is, uh, I'm gonna make sure I spell it right. The distributive law, okay? So commutative means that the numbers can commute, they can rearrange <coughs> and swap places. <coughs> Associative means you can, you can group, you can associate different pairs of numbers. What does the distributive law mean? Yeah. Okay, so it does kind of have to do with sharing, sort of. Anyone want to have another stat at it? It would be easier to make an example. Distributing it evenly? Yeah, it has to do with, and this is where I took your word of sharing, right? It's when you've got an operation and you sort of want to, well, distribute <coughs> it to different numbers. Okay, so here's an example, right? And we'll do a few of these, okay? So if I'm distributing, say, oh, okay, I want to say um, 17 times Okay, now I don't know my 17 times tables or my 12 times tables particularly well. So this is going to be a bit tricky for me. I suppose I could set this out like 17 times 12 and do, do the 2 and then do the 10, etc. That would work. We're all capable of doing that. But I'm going to take advantage of something here, which is to say that 12 is 10 plus 2. 12 is 10 plus 2. So I'm going to rewrite this like so. So I've introduced, I've sort of like broken apart this number, okay? Now if you've done this, then something really useful here is, you're saying 17 of these, and you're also saying 17 of these. That 17 times, it distributes to all the numbers inside there, right? So if you have some, um, some colors here, that multiplying by 17 is gonna multiply by 10, and it's also gonna multiply by two, okay? So that multiplica multiplication by 17, it, dis it gets distributed out to everyone in there. Okay? Now the reason why this is useful, why do you think I chose 10 and 2? Could have chosen 3 and 9, or 4 and 8, or 5 and 7. Why 10 and 2? Yeah, Because 10 and 2 is like... Do you want to tag someone else? Yeah. So, Fano, can you help me out? Okay, number one, they're even, but they're special even numbers. Like I could do, I could have done four and eight, which are also even, but these are even more special than them. I really like multiplying by 10. Why? Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, multiplying by 10 is pretty much the easiest multiplication there is, right? All you have to do is, one is, one is, one is, and zero is, but then, yeah, not, you don't really do that really. Here's what I'm gonna do. This next line, I'm going to write that distribution of 17 times this, 17 times that. I'm going to write it like this. Okay? So you can see this one 
product, multiplying two numbers, it's kind of broken apart, it's been distributed into two products. And the two products I've got now, they're much easier to deal with. Okay. So 17 times 10, of course, I'm is? 70, 70, 70. You just add that zero onto the end as a digit, not as a number. Uh, 17 times 2, still pretty easy to do, right? Like we can, we're, again, just like multiplying by 10, we're very, very good at doubling numbers. Now that I'm here, well, I can do this. This is 2, 3, 4, four. four. excellent. Now, I start off this question by saying, I don't know my 17 times table. Uh, 17, 34, 51, 68, and then I'm like, ah, this is too hard. Too much effort, right? But here, Using this idea of, look, that multiplication can distribute to all the rest of them, we broke apart this question into something really, really easy. Okay? Let me give you another example. Let's do, um, let's do this. <coughs> Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Now, I do know my 9 times tables, but I don't know them that far. And I don't really know my 18 times tables, so I'm going to double as much. But I can use the, um, I can take advantage of the distributive law again to make this something easy to do. I could write nine in a different way that would be helpful for me. Any suggestions? Yeah. You can do nine times ten and nine times eight. Okay. Uh, I could break apart this number, right, into a ten and an eight. That would work. It would be the same idea. I could do it another way. That'd be even easier than that. Yeah. Right. Just do eighteen times. Yeah, very good. So let me help you to see what exactly Brad's done by writing 9, just like I wrote 10 as, sorry, 12 as 10 plus 2. I'm going to write 9 as 10 take away 1. You see that? That's what, that's what 9 is. And so therefore, I can distribute the times 18. I can distribute it to the 10. And I can also distribute it to the minus 1. You see, you see what I've done there? Okay. So it's sort of, again, split apart. And again, if you've got another color there, this helps you see. It distributes once, and then it distributes twice. And in fact, it'll distribute however many things there are in there. You could have three or four or five terms, and it, that multiplied by 18. Very generous. It just distributes to everyone. Okay, he's a good guy. All right. um, 18 times 10. 180. Uh, take away 18. And even though that's still, mm, you need to think a little bit, you don't have to think too hard. You can still get your answer out, yeah, reasonably quickly. Okay? So, this is the distributive law. Okay? Um, it, it tends to work basically with multiplication. That's where we're mainly going to look. Okay? 